Well, elves, we've got to go. We've got another stop to make. And our nights away from home are coming to a gentle close, yes. But we're going to make a fun day of it today, I promise. We're going to show you some nice places and we're going to travel and we're going to enjoy all there is to see. Of course, we've just had a wonderful time and this was such a lovely room. And the innkeeper and his family, they're just wonderful. They're so accommodating and, yes, and the place is very nice and tidy. I think the rooms have all been done up. You know, it's only a small place. And if people don't keep coming to these inns in a small village, the village sort of loses its soul. So I suggest people, if you're in the neighbourhood and you need an overnight stay somewhere, this is a really lovely place to stay. The food is good and the accommodation is very comfortable and the accessibility to other places is cool too. So, lovely inn, yes. Uh, Bishop's Frome, we found the river. We found the Frome River and we had a walk around and um, thank you. Thank you for our time here. And um, are you guys ready? It's time to go down for breakfast. Yes, it is. And a delicious breakfast it was too. Right, on the road we go. We just had to stop at Simon Shed Rock. It wouldn't have been right to pass that up. What a beautiful, beautiful area. And I could take you straight to the view, but I won't. Let's walk together. The Wye Valley is an area of outstanding natural beauty and an internationally important projected landscape straddling the border between England and Wales. The River Wye is the fourth largest river in the United Kingdom. The area designated as an area of natural beauty covers 326 square kilometres, surrounding a 72 kilometre stretch lower down the river from just south of Hereford to Chepstow. This area cover parts of the counties of Gloucestershire, Herefordshire and Monmouthshire and is recognised in particular for its limestone gorge scenery and dense native woodlands, as well as its wildlife, archaeological and industrial remains. It is also historically important as one of the birthplaces of modern tourism industry. The area is predominantly rural and many people make a living from tourism, agriculture or forestry. The varied landscapes of the Wye Valley can be explained by underlying rocks and structures and how ice and then the river and tributary streams had acted upon them through time. We took our time here because let's face it, how often would you come across such an absolutely stunning view? And while the elves rested their wee short legs, we went for a wander. It was just beautiful and it gave us energy 
to carry on on our journey. The journey to our next um, accommodation was not as far as some of the distances have been. So we stopped off at Monmouth. We weren't quite finished with Wales just yet. And then after a short break and a bit of lunch, we carried on to Kalna to where our host was waiting to receive us. Our arrival was most welcoming. Tom, the lovely host, showed us around our area of the house that we could use and um, we went upstairs to the bedroom and unpacked our suitcase. And what a view. What a lovely, lovely view. <coughs> it might seem childish or a bit silly, I don't know. But I just can't um, emphasise enough how excited I was to see that we were so close to one of the chalk horses. It was absolute a dream come true. So yes, it was windy, but it was warm and it was a bit of a climb, but we were up to it. And oh, what a fantastic day. I have to say, this is one of my highlights of our four weeks away. I had only seen images on the news or in travel programs or just photos and have always had this yearning to actually be here close enough to almost touch. And it was exactly this horse and this uh, cenotaph that, um, and monument that I always had in mind that if I had the chance this is where I'd want to be. And to actually be able to see it out the bedroom window, well, that was icing on the cake. Facing towards the northeast, Churhill Whitehorse lies on a steep slope of Churhill Down, a little below the earthwork known as Albury Castle. It can be seen from the A4 road and the nearby village of Churhill. A good viewpoint is a lay-by alongside the westbound carriageway of the A4 where it passes below the horse. From near here, a footpath climbs up the hill towards the horse. 
Near the horse is an obelisk called the Landown Monument, visible in some photographs of the white horse. The figure at Churhill was first cut in 1780 by a Dr. Christopher Allsop of Calm and was created by stripping away the turf to expose the chalk hillside beneath. Its original size was 165 feet by 220 feet. Dr. Allsop, who was also Guild Steward of the Borough of Calm, had been called the Mad Doctor, and it is reported to have directed the making of the horse from a distance, shouting through a megaphone from below Labour in Vane Hill. His design may have been influenced by the works of his artist friend, George Stubbs, notable for his paintings of horses. Thirteen such white horses are known to have existed in Wiltshire, and of these, eight can still be seen, while the others have grown over. Oh, what a pure joy this was!